In this unit, we are going to learn more about human genetics. First of all, human genes are inherited according to the same pattern that Gregor Mendel discovered when he worked with garden peas. First, we're going to look at some diseases and conditions caused by recessive alleles. One example is albinism. This is when a person or an animal has a lack of pigment in their skin, hair, and eyes. The lack of pigment in their eyes allows the sun to damage them more easily, so they are often sensitive to light and often have eye problems. Cystic fibrosis is also caused by a recessive trait. This causes excess mucus in the lungs, the liver, and the digestive tract. People who have cystic fibrosis are also more susceptible to infections. It happens more often in Caucasians, and people with cystic fibrosis often die in their 30s, and it's caused by a mutation on chromosome number 7. Here's chromosome 7, and here's the location of the mutation. Because of this mutation, a chlorine pump does not work correctly and does not allow chlorine to escape the cells. And this makes mucus build up in the lungs and causes problems. As you see, mucus clogs the lungs and leads to chronic respiratory infections and also clogs the ducts of the pancreas, preventing digestive enzymes from reaching the intestines. So people with cystic fibrosis have lung problems and digestive issues. Another condition caused by a recessive allele is phenylketonuria. We'll talk more about this in some of your future notes. Another disease caused by a recessive allele is Tay-Sachs disease. This often runs in Jewish families. It causes lipids or fats to accumulate in your brain cells, causes mental deficiency, blindness, and death in early childhood. This mutation is found on chromosome 15. Recessive alleles are not the only thing that can cause genetic diseases. Dominant alleles can also be problems. One example of a genetic condition caused by a dominant gene is achondroplasia, which is a type of dwarfism. This is the most common type that people think of when they think of little people. These two boys are twin boys, obviously not identical twins, they're fraternal twins. However, you'll see that one has a normal genotype and one has the gene for achondroplasia. Another disease caused by a dominant gene is Huntington's disease. This causes mental deterioration and uncontrollable movements in a person once they get to their 30s or 40s. Unfortunately, people don't know they have this until they've already had children and may have passed this disease on to them. This is caused by a mutation on chromosome 4. Genetic diseases may also be caused by codominant alleles. For example, sickle cell disease is a codominant allele. If a person has a single copy of the gene, they are protected from malaria. That gene causes some of their cells to be sickle-shaped, and the normal gene causes the rest of their red blood cells to be round. These sickle-shaped cells prevent mosquitoes from giving you malaria because the malaria organism cannot reproduce inside those sickle-shaped cells. However, if a person has two copies of this gene, all of their blood cells are sickle-shaped, and they tend to get clogged up in the capillaries between the veins and the arteries. Yes, you're protected from malaria, but at a cost of very poor health and many problems. Sickle cell disease is most common in people of African descent. You'll notice 
that the pink show areas where the highest percent of the population has the sickle cell allele. Then look at the areas where malaria is most common as well. This is why this allele has persisted and continued to be passed on even though it often causes death because the people who have this allele are protected from malaria. Here are some other dominant traits that are not necessarily diseases, but these are things caused by dominant alleles. The ability to roll your tongue is a genetic trait. If you can't roll your tongue, it's not your fault. You didn't inherit the gene that allows you to do it. But if you did inherit at least one copy of this dominant gene, then you'll be able to roll your tongue. A widow's peak is when your hair goes down in kind of a heart-shaped hairline. A widow's peak is dominant over a straight hairline. Now this little guy is a TV character off the Munsters, but you're probably wondering, who's this poor fella? He is King Charles II of Spain, and he is the last of a long line of inbred family members. You can see the jaw that resulted from inbreeding for almost 200 years in this royal family. See, a prince is supposed to marry a princess. So the problem is that there are only so many royal families in Europe. And after a while, a royal family member marrying another royal family member, they finally ran out of new people to marry and they only had to marry family members if they, a prince was going to marry a princess. So eventually that caused severe problems from the inbreeding. In fact, King Charles II was so inbred that he had trouble chewing and speaking because of that huge jaw and a very large tongue. And he struggled with mental retardation and he could not even have children because he was so inbred. And he died at age 38 ending the Habsburg line. Here is King Charles II's family tree, and you can see how many times relatives married each other over and over until finally poor Charles II of Spain turned out the way he did. Here is a family from West Virginia who is inbred. You can see the troubles that result from family members marrying each other. Just like the blue fugates, what happens is there are rare recessive genes with mutations that never really cause problems unless you get two of them. And if family members never marry, those rare recessive genes are very unlikely to ever meet in one person. A free earlobe is dominant and an attached earlobe is recessive. I have the dominant trait. A hitchhiker's thumb is recessive and a straight thumb is dominant. Now, my thumb curves just a little bit, but not enough to be considered a hitchhiker's thumb. Hitchhiker's thumb is when it kind of bends back on itself. Having hair on the back of your fingers between the two middle knuckles is a dominant trait. Not having finger hair is a recessive trait. Now, most of us will have hair here, but Right here, I do not have hair on my fingers, and so this is a recessive trait. Having freckles is dominant. Having no freckles is recessive. So those are some fun dominant and recessive traits that you may see in your family. Next, we're going to talk about pedigree charts. These show the relationships within a family and they can be used to predict the probability of genetic birth defects. A genetic counselor is a person who figures out the pedigree chart and uses it to inform the families of what percentage chance they have of having a child with a genetic birth defect and helping them decide whether to have kids or whether maybe they want to adopt. In a pedigree, a square shape is a male and a circle is a female. The way I remember this, females have breasts and they are round, 
So round is for females. A horizontal line connects a male and a female and represents a marriage. A vertical line will connect the parents to their children. In this picture, the square is the dad, the circle is the mom, and they have two daughters. A circle or a square that is colored in or shaded is a person who has a particular trait. This may be a dominant trait or it may be a recessive trait, but they're the one that has the trait as opposed to not having it. A circle or square that's not shaded in is someone that does not have this trait. As we've already said, a circle is a female, a square is a male. This male has whatever trait we are looking at because he's colored in, and the female does not have it because she's not colored in. They had a son, a daughter, and a daughter. This son has the trait, whatever the trait is. He married a woman with the trait, and they had a daughter with the trait and a daughter without the trait. The grandparents also had a daughter who does not have the trait and a daughter who does. This daughter married a man who does not show the trait. They had a son without the trait, a son with the trait, and a daughter with the trait. When you see a trait in one generation and then you don't see it and then it comes back again later, that means you have a recessive allele. If the trait can go away and then come back, it must be hidden here in this second generation. And it must be recessive because somebody passed it down, but nobody actually had the trait. If the trait is found in every generation, however, and does not skip any generations, then the trait must be dominant. Remember from the previous chapter that two chromatids will make up a chromosome. When they split, one chromatid is still a chromosome. Together, this is a homologous pair. One chromatid came from your mom and one chromatid came from your dad. When you have kids, you will pass on one of these two chromatids, but not both. Plus, you will shuffle the genes on the chromosomes before you pass them on. That way, you won't pass on just your mom's traits or just your dad's traits but a combination of the two. Now, each species has a characteristic number of chromosomes. Humans, for example, have 46 chromosomes made of 23 pairs of chromosomes. 23 from your mom, 23 from your dad, for a total of 46. A karyotype is a picture of an organism's chromosomes. The karyotype shows the 22 pairs of autosomes and the one pair of sex chromosomes. The X and Y chromosomes are the sex chromosomes that determine whether an organism is a male or female. All the other chromosomes, 22 pairs for humans, are autosomes. They are body chromosomes that control the rest of your body. Here is a picture of a karyotype. The chromosomes have been photographed and cut out and moved and put in pairs. So each pair of chromosomes has been put together. And you'll see you have 23 total pairs. 22 of them are lined up here. Then the last two, notice how there's this big tall chromosome and a little short chromosome. These are your sex chromosomes. The tall one is an X, and the one that's half the size is a Y. Since this has an X and a Y, this is a male. Here's another karyotype. This one has two X chromosomes and no Y chromosomes. Therefore, this is a female. This karyotype shows an organism with 24 chromosomes. It happens to be a chimpanzee. 24 pairs, that is. You'll notice that humans have 23 and chimpanzees have 24, but you can't really judge an organism by its chromosomes because there's no rhyme or reason to it. 
a lamb has 54 chromosomes, or 27 pairs. Corn has 10 pairs, or 20 chromosomes. Snails have 18 pairs. You would think a little snail would have fewer pairs of chromosomes, and yet they have a bunch. A mouse has 40 chromosomes, or 20 pairs. Here is a karyotype for a human, but look closely. Do you see the problem? Look down at the bottom. Wait a minute. There's three of chromosome 21 instead of two like they're supposed to be. When a person has three copies of chromosome 21, they end up with Down syndrome. Since this person has one X and one Y chromosome, it must be a male. So here is a child with Down syndrome. One in 750 births have an extra chromosome 21. This chromosome causes mental retardation. However, children with Down syndrome are able to live and thrive. This is one of the better cases that can occur when somebody has an extra chromosome. Usually, when someone has extra chromosomes, they can't even live. But chromosome 21, they usually do survive. Here's another karyotype. This person also has Down syndrome with three chromosome 21. This one is also a male. See the large X chromosome and the small Y chromosome. Turner's syndrome occurs when a female has a single X chromosome instead of two X chromosomes like she's supposed to. She is a female because she doesn't have a Y. However, she is short. Her ovaries never mature, so she won't be able to have children. And she'll often have heart problems, hearing loss, and sometimes decreased mental ability. However, there's a wide range of people with Turner syndrome. Here's the classic look of a person with Turner syndrome. She has a webbed neck. You'll notice her neck kind of does this. She has puffy feet. Her elbows are bent oddly. She'll You'll see with the children below that their elbows are kind of bent out weird. And a stocky body and a low hairline. However, this girl also has Turner syndrome and she shows very few of the characteristic traits. So there's a whole range of severity when it comes to Turner syndrome. Kleinfelter syndrome occurs when a male has an extra X chromosome. He is a male because he does have a Y chromosome. However, he also has an X like a female would. So these males, once again, cannot have children. They often have breasts and hips, and they will often have learning disabilities. Here are two males with Kleinfelter syndrome and you can see that they do have female style breasts. Often, however, a man with Kleinfelter syndrome won't even know he has it until he can't have children. Then he goes and gets tested to see what's wrong and that's when he finds out he has Kleinfelters. So many guys with Kleinfelters don't show any symptoms except being unable to have children. Remember, a diploid cell has two copies of each chromosome. These are your normal body cells or somatic cells. Then cells with only one copy of each chromosome are haploid. They have half the normal number of chromosomes. Only sex cells, sperm and egg, are haploid. Why are we talking about this? Well, sperm and egg cells are the ones that undergo meiosis and end up with half the chromosomes to pass on to the child. But if the chromosomes don't separate correctly during meiosis, that's called non-disjunction. They did not disjoin. And if that extra chromosome goes to the baby, there's always a problem. Down syndrome is one of the least damaging things that can happen. 
If some of the other chromosomes fail to separate, often the child doesn't even live. Meiosis mistakes during the making of eggs and sperm are passed down to the children because they are included in the egg and sperm. Mitosis mistakes, however, cannot be passed down to your children. Cancer is a mitosis mistake. The cell multiplies out of control, but it's not the egg and sperm that are doing this. It's the regular somatic body cells. These cells are not passed on to your children, so cancer cannot be passed on to your children. Now, you can have a genetic tendency to be more likely to get cancer. That can be passed on, but the actual cancer is not passed on to your children. Finally, we talked about how getting three copies of a chromosome is very bad and at a minimum results in Down syndrome. This is known as triploidy getting three copies of a chromosome. Polyploidy means you get many sets of chromosomes, so more than three. Triploidy and polyploidy are helpful and beneficial in plants. For example, have you seen the daffodils with extra petals and extra fancy flowers? Those are often polyploid daffodils. Strawberries are another example. Have you ever noticed that wild strawberries are really small, yet the store-bought ones can get absolutely ginormous? That's because strawberries have eight copies of each pair of chromosomes. So instead of having one of each pair, like a normal human, plant, animal, they have eight of each pair. That's why strawberries can get so huge. So plants with extra sets of chromosomes grow bigger, better, taller, stronger, healthier. It's actually a good thing for a plant to get extra chromosomes. However, when a human has polyploidy, that's very harmful. And usually humans don't survive very long with extra chromosomes. What I'm going to show you next is really hard to look at. So if you are sensitive to such things, you may wish to turn your eyes away. When a baby is born with trisomy 13, trisomy 3 copies of chromosome 13, they really don't often live very long at all. Many are stillborn if they're very severe. Some look close to normal, but even they don't live very long. So you can see just how severe three copies of a chromosome can be. Trisomy 18, three copies of chromosome 18, is also a terrible syndrome, and those babies don't live very long either. Finally, when it comes to the X chromosome, remember that females have two copies of this X chromosome. Often, one of these chromosomes is turned on and one is turned off in a part of a female's body. This is how calico cats can have three colors. This is also why calico cats are almost always female. Because in order to have three different colors, there have to be two X chromosomes, which happen to carry the gene for coat color. So you have a part of the cat's skin where this X chromosome is turned on, and that makes the cat have that orangey color. Then, in another patch of the cat's skin, the other X chromosome is turned on, and that gives the cat the dark color. If a male cat is calico, then that must be a Kleinfelter's cat, because the cat has to have two X chromosomes, plus a Y if it's a male, and that's how the cat is able to have three colors because it has two X chromosomes.